Hey there guys. So today we are going to do the questions for chapters four and five. Okay. So I'm going to start with the quick, right? It says, write about a new friend that you have recently met. How did you meet him or her? Um, I know that you guys haven't really been allowed outside because of the quarantine. So if you could think of the last time you made a friend that that would be great. So just think of a time that you met somebody for the first time. It could have even been this year, someone that you met in our classroom and it was the first time you met them. So you could do that. Um, I would like it to be more than one sentence though. I see some of you are only doing one sentence and you're better than that. You can do way better. All right, moving on to multiple choice. Number one, choose the best word to describe Templeton, Templeton the rat. So I will help you with these like I normally do, but I'm not going to forever, so be ready. So page 30, the whole page basically is about Templeton and how he made all these tunnels and all of these places that he can go to sneak around and he uses these tunnels to go and get Wilbur's food because Wilbur is feeling sad that day. So would you say that he's fun? Not really. Sneaky? Maybe. Clever? Maybe. Friendly? If he's eating Wilbur's food, I don't think he's that friendly. So I would go with sneaky or clever, and I think he's more sneaky because he's poking his head out of the tunnel to see if anybody's watching, so he's trying to be sneaky. Number two, how many eggs is the goose sitting upon? So if you go to page 28, the goose is talking about how she has to sit on her eggs. She says, sorry, sunny, sorry, said the goose. I'm sitting on my eggs, eight of them. Gotta keep them toasty, toasty, toasty warm. I have to stay right here. I'm no flippery, everybody gibbet. I do not play when there are eggs to hatch. I'm expecting goslings. So she said, there's eight. Now we're on to true or false. Wilbur's new friend is a centipede. No, and if you go to page 36 to check your answers, because we should always check our answers with the text, um, there's a picture of Charlotte in her web. So she's obviously a spider. So false, it is not a centipede. Number two, Wilbur is forced to drink some medicine. Remember when he was all sad and droopy and um, Lurvy was worried about him? So on page 31, give him two spoonfuls of sulfur and a little molasses, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur couldn't believe what was happening to him when Lurvy caught him and forced the medicine down his throat. So that's true. He was forced to drink medicine. Number three, Wilbur's friend Templeton is loyal and kind. So we kind of already talked about that on page 30 when he makes all those tunnels and eats Wilbur's food. Do you think he's loyal and kind? I don't think so. I would put false. Number four, Wilbur feels horrified that Charlotte eats other insects. So remember, go back to your text for that. I went to page 38. I wanted to go a little ways after they met. So she's wrapping up this fly in her web. And at the bottom of the page, it says, Wilbur watched in horror. He could hardly believe what he was seeing. And although he detested flies, he was sorry for this one. So true. He is horrified that Charlotte eats these insects. Number five, the goose must sit on her eggs for about 30 days. So I remember them saying that, but again, we got to check our answers. So go to page 33. And Wilbur and the goose are talking. Wilbur says, too many things on my mind, said Wilbur. Well, said the goose, that's not my trouble. I have nothing at all on my mind, but I've got too many things under my behind. Have you ever tried to sleep while sitting on eight eggs? No, replied Wilbur. I suppose it is uncomfortable. How long does it take for a goose egg to hatch? Approximately only 30 days, all told, answered the goose. So yes, 30 days, true. Details, below write two details from the chapters you just read that you think are important. So think of two 
very important things from chapters four and five. Maybe the most important thing in chapter four and the most important thing in chapter five. Then you go on to the short answers, which it says use complete sentences. And I also want you to use more than one sentence. Number one says, why does the author name chapter four loneliness? Use textual evidence to support your answer. So why is it called loneliness? Why do you think the author named it that? And then give me some evidence from the book. Tell me why you think it's named loneliness based on what happens in the chapter. Number two says, what are Wilbur's first impressions about his new friend, Charlotte? Why does he have these impressions? So I went to page 37 when he first met her and she was talking about how she catches flies and drinks blood and all of that stuff. So if you go to page 37 and start there and read a couple pages, think about what Wilbur thinks of her and why does he think that? Number three says foreshadowing is when an author gives hints about what will happen later in the story. Below, write at least two examples of foreshadowing, foreshadowing from these chapters, then write what these hints help you predict about the story. So I went to page 40, and on page 40, um, Wilbur is still pretty horrified. Oh, uh, my dogs are crazy. On page 40, Wilbur is pretty horrified about um, how Charlotte eats her bugs. And so he says, it's cruel, replied Wilbur, who did not intend to be argued out of his position. <coughs> well, you can't talk, said Charlotte. You have your meals brought to you in a pail. Nobody feeds me. I thought that was foreshadowing because why do pigs get fed? Why do they have big pails of food brought to them? Is it because people are trying to make them fat? Because people want to kill them and make bacon out of them and pork tacos and other delicious stuff? So I think that it's kind of sad that an example of foreshadowing in these chapters is Wilbur being brought pails of food and Charlotte pointing it out, being like, uh-uh, you get your food delivered to you. And since he gets it delivered to him, we can predict it's because he might be killed later. But he might not be. You never know. Okay, on to the vocabulary. I have your flashcards up in case you're curious where these definitions are coming from. Frolic. Frolic means play or romp. So definition, write down play or romp. And then draw that. Cunning. Cunning is craftiness, sneakiness. So where it says definition, write down craftiness, sneakiness, and then draw that. The last one is meekly. Meekly means timidly, apologetically. So write in the definition box, timidly, apologetically, and then draw a picture of it. And then fill in the blank. I laughed as I watched my puppy blank in the ocean waves at the beach. Frolic, cunning, meekly. Which one? The fox in the story was a blank fellow that tricked all of the other characters. Frolic, cunning, or meekly. I blank apologized to my mom for breaking her special vase. Frolic, cunning, meekly. And then it says beyond. Write a paragraph. Oh, sorry. Below, draw a picture of Wilbur's new friend, Charlotte. Then write a paragraph about what you know about her so far. So draw her, and then you could do sort of an, an informative writing, even though it's fiction. Um, you could say, today I will tell you about Charlotte, and then tell me three things about her, okay, with a conclusion, and that would be great. 
And that is your work for chapters four and five, friends. And we will start chapter six on Monday. I will see you later. Goodbye.